Last episode of 2020. Thank goodness. Yeah, I know, right? We've been waiting for this one. <laughs> Jeez. End 20. of the year. How many episodes did we do this year? This should be 53, oh, which wow. I don't know how... how to, I mean, isn't there only 52 year, weeks in the year? Times fly. Well, yeah. well <laughs> times does fly. <laughs> Somehow we snuck Time's fun one. when you're having flies. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Clearly, this is the year more. where I blamed everything on Corona. Yes. Like anything. Oh. My head, Corona, anything. I was talking to someone the other day. There's, at least in my crazy mixed up brain, is um, simultaneously thinking, wow, this year has flown by. And then simultaneously thinking, January seems like a lifetime ago. I can't even remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like that's a weird feeling for me. How those two things can coexist. This is like time. in my lifetime the fastest and the slowest year ever. Mm. Yeah, same. I feel like it's weird? the fastest and the it, slowest. It's very weird. Normally we would say, "Man, this year's flown by. We're getting older." It seems like yesterday we just started. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever longed for like 2021 or another year ahead than I have this year. For some reason, I'm like. It's Gotta, yeah, okay. no one wants it to slow down. So that's why I'm so excited about 21. Yeah, I am. Do you guys remember, um, I think it was sometime in January, we did a podcast and we said what our our word for the year was. And we were all excited. None of us knew anything about coronavirus. And we were looking at, at 2020, uh, new decade, all this mm. fun stuff. And we said, what's your year? Do you guys remember that? Yeah. Yes. Well, I pulled it up this morning and um, let me tell you, why don't we talk today about what our words were and then if, what that, what do they ring true now? <laughs> did the, okay. you it's know, a fun game. Yeah. Or did mm. we forget about it back in no, COVID I, hit or? Yeah. So, I, so I Brad, to, yours was clarity. Clarity, yeah. I remember too what I was going through. So you know, it was uh, beginning of of last year in January. It was um, I think there was some challenging things that were going on in the business, but then COVID hit, and then it kind of cleared those up. It just kind of naturally cleared those up. So my clarity was became I got clarity because of COVID. Um, in a weird way. It, yeah, seriously. So it brought perspective. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, I've got some notes from the top three curtain pulls, which if you guys enjoy the show, go and read those. They're included on every episode. Brad, we'll start with you. Uh, clarity. You said gaining clarity about the five year snapshot of your agency and who you want to be vital to be who you want to be is vital to long-term growth and mm. success in an mm. industry that is being disrupted every day, gaining clarity on your services, value proposition and mission and pivoting accordingly is a must pivoting. Look mm. at you, Mr. Profit. Yeah. Yeah, man. Who knew? So you got clarity. I got yeah. I pivoted a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Everybody pivoted. You're building houses now. <laughs> we, we all pivot. <laughs> building out. Yeah. So does that mm -hmm. clarity, do you, well, well, what do you think for 2020? I mean, did that, yeah. are you, are you in a blur like all of us are, or do you have clarity? Well, I have a new word for 21. I don't know if you want to hear it, <laughs> but a new hope, a new, a new hope. That's good. Yeah. The, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of a Star Wars fan, but not really, but a new hope. Mm. Uh, yeah. New hope for 21. I feel positive and very optimistic about 21. Mm. Um, clarity. I've uh, learned a lot this year that's going to help me even have more clarity. So um, I feel like. That word did kind of get, um, COVID helped me to um, get a little bit more clarity. I had to go think a little bit more. And also, I think it also did some things where it slowed us down, all of us, right, a little bit. I mean, we're at home with our family and we kind of prior reprioritized our lives in general, not just our business lives, but our personal lives. And I think that gives you clarity. I can't imagine as a business owner, someone runs a business, your, your personal life and your, and your, and your work life, or, or, there's no, there's no difference. I mean, they're, they're the same. You just, you're constantly in doing both and, um, you can lose priority, which, um, I think COVID helped us to kind of center ourselves Absolutely. and yeah. slow down a little bit and spend time with family. And mm -hmm. that also helped to, to understand my clarity and long, long-term clarity. So yeah, there you go. Good. Well, that was pretty. That was pretty. No, nah, I mean, pretty good. Yeah, I know what mine was. You have to even well, read it. Okay. What was it? Go. Mm -hmm. Go. 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 Yeah. Well, how do you say that? Do you say it, go or like go? Go. 
Oh, just that's confident. Like flip and go, man. That's go. That's confident though. <laughs> no, it was meant to be. Um, it was it. My word uh, that we chose was part of a phrase. It was go forward, go public with purpose, oh, even okay, when it's yeah. hard. Yeah, yeah. And um, uh, and we even you know that's that was our phrase for twenty. Looking back on twenty nineteen, going into twenty twenty, and um, I feel like that phrase, even when it's hard, um, really came true in 2020. We didn't realize what was going to happen. And, and there were some challenges, uh, you know, COVID was one of the challenges. Um, we had some unique business challenges early in 2020. Um, and, uh, and I remember thinking back, like, you know, looking back at this little phrase that we kind of naively picked, didn't know what we were going to, you know, almost bring on ourselves by, by picking it, it felt like, um, and, uh, and it, and it became, I would say for, for me, it became a, uh, something to look back at and pull from, Mm. um, because, you know, continuing to move forward is not easy when it feels like you should just hunker down. Um, and, uh, and, and it also, also doing it, even when it's hard, um, is not easy. And that kind of builds perseverance and, and all kinds of other good qualities that are not fun to build, but like only come through hardship and trial and, and some of those things. And, um, you know, honestly perspective, you know, we didn't have it. I didn't, I didn't have it as bad as a lot of people. Mm. Um, but, uh, there were some significant challenges, you know, just inside of, Mm. inside of our world. Um, I know other people had a lot more challenges, yeah. and, you know, um, yeah. and lost people and, um, but, um, but that idea that, that phrase of go continuing to move, uh, forward and, um, and do it in a, in a way that has purpose mm. and, and doing it even when it's difficult, um, actually became something that we continue to look back at, um, and, uh, and kind of reminded us and reminded me to just keep, keep, uh, keep doing it and, uh, keep doing it with purpose and keep doing it even when it's hard because that kind of builds perseverance and, and a bunch of other good qualities. Yeah. yeah. I love that. I love the, I love the, um, visual illustration of go. It's kind of like, we're not going to just sit still and wonder or hunker down, but we're going to keep moving forward. Um, I love that. And some of that, some of what comes from that is I think that, um, you know, we tend to, and, and my, sometimes I tend to uh, want to wait for things to be perfect before you go. And I think part of the go is just like, you got to just push, push off and, and go, you know, you gotta, you know, things aren't going to be all buttoned up and perfect and you, but it's like doing it is, mm. is a big step. And, um, and I think we saw, you know, yeah, I think for businesses, 2020 was, we just got to do this thing. Yeah. You know, if you waited, if you wondered, if you um, were hesitant or not sure how to adapt, um, you suffered from it. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't think it was being unwise. I think you have to wisely step into things, but I think at some point you just have to take a little bit of risk and step. Um, and so I think, yeah, I don't know. A lot of it rang tr- true for me looking back and kind of just thinking through it. Um, I think there was a lot of relevance uh, to, to what we were doing. So, yeah, yeah. Well, you you did a lot, and, and both of you guys did in, in 2020. So did you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we all did. Speaking of me, my, yeah, what, my two words were transformation and ooh, leap. Yes, um, I think uh, it says uh, sounds like both having the happened. bravery to transform your business and take leaps into new territory. So, I, I think for me, the reason I I I picked two at the time was, um, you know, there's a lot of changes that have been going on in my life the last few, last few years, about three years, um, since I closed buzz plant, my agency, and then kind of went out on my own and, um, business changes, personal changes. And the beginning of 2020 for me was really trying to be more intentional about embracing that. Um, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes at my age, it's hard to change and grow. It it just seems like it's so easy to get set in your ways. Um, But to transform, um, to me, is always a a an attractive word because 
change is like, well, I'm going to mm. do something, but now I'm going to do something. It's something different. Whereas transform is something that is, it's going to keep the essence on some level of, of its core, but it's going to morph into something better or different. Um, and so a transformation, um, I think for me, that was really something that I want to embrace in 2020. And who would have known or thought? Um, and as I think back, man, those days and weeks and months of sitting on the back porch on Zoom, um, mm. working from, you know, your living room, um, you know, that those are transformational for me. And I know for a lot of people, whether you want to or not, um, you're just forced to sit with yourself, um, which, which is not always easy. So in that sense, it was very transformational. The other one was leap is taking, you know, for me having my courage to do that and having courage. So, and that's what I did in, in 2020. In a lot of ways, I actually went to work for five by five agency, took a job working for them. Um, just started as something that was kind of a part-time gig and uh, the situation worked out and I just love what I'm doing right now. And who would have thought in January of, of 2020, I would mm. be doing what I'm doing now. Um, lots of other personal changes, all good. Uh, family changes, all good. My, my son got married this year. Um, we got to go out and celebrate that in California. Uh, just lots of, transformational things that have happened in our lives, my life, my work life. Um, so yeah, yeah, I, I think I can look back and say, you know, not to, not to be all woo woo, but it's interesting how you set intentions out there and you're, and you're purposeful about like, you know, I'm going to embrace this this year. Mm. Um, and I don't know if it's a matter of that happens or you just have a mindset to look back and go, Oh, okay. I can put it in context. I don't understand how all that works, but um, yeah. So that's my, those are my words. Yeah. Mm, that's good. It's a, uh, as I think about the end of 2020, I, I think that um, there was a shared, a shared feeling upon everyone, not just friends and, and but just the world in general. There's like a sense of, <clears throat> I, ca- I kind of call it, I kind of mourned a lot this year mm. for people, just just for our world in general. Yeah. And I think there's a sense that um, you take on that heaviness. I took on a lot of the heaviness, not just the fear of COVID, but just more like this heaviness. Sadness, a lot of yeah. And, uh, you know, it's it's interesting because with the, the COVID numbers and stuff, how, how shockingly high they are in the United States. And I know there's so much you know, a lot of people politically and all the junk that happened this year, I call it junk because, I don't know. Anyways. There's no other word for it. Yeah, just a lot of, uh, un, yeah. you know, it. it um, uh, we haven't really, you know, sat back. I haven't sat back and kind of mourned for those people mm. um, that have struggled this year in that way. I know a lot of people have, um, mm. not just with people with um deaths in their family, but uh, financially yeah. and people. And so I feel I've been actually very blessed this year. Um, and so it's maybe it's almost out of like, because uh, financially uh, we had a g- pretty good year this year with our business. We ended up um, a lot better than I ever thought would in March. And I almost feel like a little like, I've, like why me? You know guilty. what I mean? Guilty. <laughs> yeah, a little bit guilty almost, yeah. a little bit in some ways. Survivor's and, guilt. Well, a little bit, and I guess maybe that makes me more, um, you know, just you shouldn't feel to. guilty because the only way people can be helped is by other by by people, right? That yeah. have resources, yeah. Um, and so, I think you know, stewarding, I, the, and you know this, but like, yeah, uh, hey, you steward them well, right? And and build wealth and yeah. steward it well and help people. Otherwise, no one can be helped. Yeah, no, right. yeah, I understand what you're saying, though. I think I think it's important for me, and I can't speak for you guys, but I think I can. <laughs> is that that we we get on here a lot and we talk about success, and you know, I think at at least at the end of the year of 2020, I think it's good for us to at least acknowledge that not everyone's having it good, um, and we can empathize because I've been there. Mm. Um, so it's not like I've never yeah. felt that. So. Um, I think it's good to 
remember, you know, our friend Victor in our neighborhood that was a friend that, that passed away because of COVID. And, mm-hmm. you know, I know there's listeners listening who have family members and um, who are struggling. Honestly, you're struggling to pay your bills. I mean, I get it. I know that it's, I know that there are people in industries who, you know, maybe you st- started an agency or, or, or you were a solo, you just started your, your solopreneur business and 2020 has been tough. Um, I, we get that, but Hopefully 2021 will will turn around. Don't give up hope. Um, a new hope. Yeah. Yeah. Make yourself, get yourself a word or two and just write it down and go keep going back to it. Yeah. I think that I, I, I've i always done that practice of picking a theme or a word or some intention. And uh, some people may think it's hokey, but um, I think that, that being intentional about what, you know, it's sort of being strategic. Like what are we, what, what happened last year? How can we learn from it? And what do I think I should um, either focus on or use as a reference point? Anytime I get into, you know, I know this is going to happen. I know this can happen. So mm. I need something to kind of center me. Mm. You know, I think that that's a really smart practice so that you're not just reacting through the year, but you're actually being intentional through the year. Um, and it's not like you think about it every day, maybe, but maybe you do. Um, but it's based on your goals and, and your priorities and your and, and the work that's happening in your life and you know whatever uh, whatever other number of things that uh, that are uh, that are inside of your life. I just think that that practice is really helpful. Mm. Um, I'd encourage anyone to do. Yeah, it. and just writing it down. I mean, I know we've talked about this. Maybe we have or didn't, but there was a study. I believe it was done in Harvard Harvard Business School. Um, and it was done over a period of about 30, 40 years. One of the most long-term studies that were ever done about people who wrote down their goals and their mm-hmm. task and their visions for their life and those who actually fulfilled that um, at, yeah. in the middle of their career whenever they came back and they kind of followed them through their career. It was just uh, overwhelmingly, um, you know, those who wrote it down um, – actually fulfilled on most of them fulfilled on it mm. versus those who didn't um yeah interesting study go look it up i don't have the details but but that's always stuck with me is that it's it's not just like oh here's a good idea but it's scientific proof mm-hmm. it's fact it's like you write it down you know you're gonna remember it you're gonna think about it you know and i would encourage you to do that so i know you guys um i know the answer here but uh, i'm curious we all make i mean I've, I, you know we're all 2020 is not was not a fun year, right? I don't think anyone would say that. Most people wouldn't. Um, but would you take it back? Absolutely not. Of course not, right? Well, uh, uh-uh. <laughs> no, actually, Proud would. no. I I I learned too much, and that has grown me. Uh, um, I was definitely thinking about that. I remember those times, and and I didn't write this down, um, which I think would have been interesting to do a journal this year. I just not a big journaler. Um, but I, uh, I remember in March sometime, maybe in the end of March or maybe it was April, I can't remember, beginning of April. I just felt like I, we're all at home. This is when we're all shut in and, you know, a couple, a lot of our clients and stuff were struggling at that point. They just didn't know what to do because they were shut down and their business relied on it a hundred percent to be open. And, um, I, th- I just kind of felt like I didn't know what to do. I was just like stuck a feeling of stuck and I haven't felt that way. And you get to learn a lot about yourself when you, when you're pushed a little bit further. And I learned a lot about myself, things I didn't really care for and things that I, um, the next time it happens, I won't be, Mm. you know, I I won't be as stuck. I think because I've learned that it, the stuckness goes away It, it, in time over, you know, a period of time can heal a lot of things and change a lot of things. Um, so I felt, um, so that's one thing that I definitely learned this year. And I think for all of us, I think we have all been pushed to the point where you kind of get to understand who you really are and what the inner priorities in your life. And so I think to, this year was that year. And the growth I hope that people will take in 2021, I'm going to take in 2021. Mm-hmm. And um, hopefully not look back and just forget about this little blip, you know. I mean, 10 or 15 years from now, if there's not another pandemic, you know, we'll... Uh, people, you know, kids will be talking about it and learning about it. And, and, you know, in 30 years from now, people will be in a hundred years from now, people will be like, Oh yeah, my grandfather went through that or whatever. And, 
if that's the case. So it's um it's been an interesting year. It's also I think been an interesting year. I think there's just a lot of um there's definitely a lot of pent up energy which I think is going to explode in 2021 hopefully in a very positive way. Mm. <clears throat> I think there's been a lot of innovation. Mm-hmm. And I think people's minds have changed in the, th- the way they think about work. I think this year has forced, uh, um, I think, just general um, commerce and general business to change in a, in a dramatic way that there's no way we would we would have changed this quickly without being forced to. So I think there's new new things. People, there's new ways that people are going to work. People are going to work from home more. Um, you know, there's just a lot of change in that area. Yeah, I mean, I think that I, you're. I, I think you're right, and why I joked that you wouldn't take it back because, I, I mean, I think obviously 2020 was hard. Um, I think it brought a lot of hardship. I actually think that um, a lot of the things that happened in 2020, you know, like all the pent up frustration and some of this stuff, these are negative things that we're going to see the residual effect for probably a couple of years, right? So I don't mm-hmm. think that. I think it was a more potentially more enjoyable life in some ways before before all this happened. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was almost it almost seemed like there was a lot of unhealth that was that was happening yes. through that, and and we had to do um, we did, not we but like you know God God gave us a timeout and uh, and and we had to deal with some things, and we are dealing with some things, and those things are always tough. But I do think that I mean you know. Um, benefits do come out of that. And even looking at myself, I'm like, it was hard, but, um, it forced me to grow in a lot of places. Mm. And, um, and there were even some really great benefits, right? Mm. Like I remember going into 2020 and thinking, um, you know, I didn't like, I felt like I was on a, like just a hamster wheel every day, you know, the same exact thing. And for, for me, that always, that starts to drive me a little crazy. Like I don't, I don't like to feel like I'm sort of in in a stuck position, um, and that was really starting to wear on me. And I was like, I don't know how you break this other than like disrupt a lot of things. And then 2020 like broke it, you know, um, and it gave permission to for I mean for a lot of people, for businesses, for personal, for people in person, uh, for for your personal lives, it gave you permission to just do things differently. Um, and that presented a lot of benefit. I got, you know, spend a lot more time with my kids who were at home doing school and that kind of thing, which was actually, um, I think, hugely beneficial. Um, permission to uh, get out of the just mundane routine of, you know, coming into an office and doing things where probably there were a lot of inefficiencies in doing that. Like, you know, I'm one of those people that I'm like, okay, this is another conversation, which means I'm not getting something done, you know? Um, now I'm not saying we don't like. I think there, there's a pendulum swing that can happen, and it can be bad. But um, there were some benefits to that. But then, honestly, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of challenges in the business, in, in business, and and we're still seeing the residual of that. But all that to say is, I don't say in a cliche way like, "Oh, I'd never take that back." It was great. I don't think it was all great, and I think it's still hard. And I think actually, I'm not looking forward to dealing with a lot of the annoying things that we now have to deal with because of 2020 going mm-hmm. forward. Like I'm not looking forward to that at all. I could totally do without the masks and the coronavirus and the shutdowns and the uh, unrest and the, you know, everyone ready to pounce on each other for, you know, for missing a comma in a sentence or what, you know, like I could totally do without all that stuff. Um, but I still think that, uh, you know, I think there's a, there was a ton of benefit to it. And mm. I think we're still living that out. And I think the growth that happens through this is a good thing. And I think it's good know. for, for just humanity in general. You know, you look back historically and in the, we always talk about the greatest generation, right? We talk about world war two and the mm. boomers and, you know, or prior to that. And, um, before that you had world war one, then you had in America, you had the civil war and then you keep going back. You had famines and all kinds of stuff. Then you had the revolutionary war seems to be like every generation or so, you know, you had something that caused 
um, resiliency and reset the priorities and, and, and just kind of disrupted. And we hadn't had one of those since mm-hmm. World War II, really. I mean, there was Vietnam, but for most people, yeah. um, that's still a long time ago. And it wasn't as disruptive. It was in a lot of ways for a lot of people, obviously. Yeah. But I think, I think 2020, um, you know, not to, to make light of people's pain and loss and death, but, um, it, it, I think in a lot of ways it will be transformational. Um, I think it will be studied for many decades to come because so much change in the middle of, you know, there was never so much technology and and things Mm -hmm. like that. And there's other transformational times, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, but you go back and you look at things like the Great Plague and the Renaissance and everything that came out of it. um, And I'm not comparing what we've gone through. It was minor in, in comparison to many of those things. However, it was worldwide. It was forced. It was transformational. It was disruptive. And um, I think, as as human beings, first of all, and then secondary as business people, we need to study those. We need to think hard about them, and we need to say, like you said, is like we're not going back in a lot of ways, right? Some of it's very disruptive and annoying. Um, what are we going to do with those things? What are we going? How are we going to transform versus how are we just going to be annoyed and go? Oh, I wish it was the way I it used think to be. That is the difference between a good leader or a successful person and someone who doesn't really accomplish much or always is frustrated is like mourning the loss. At some point you have to put that behind you. And if you just if you just harp on it, whereas you whereas what you need to do is the good old days. Be like, look, that happened. <laughs> that happened. We can't change it. The good old like, days. Gotta go forward, right? Yeah, you know, <clears throat> last year here, I was just thinking about this too, is that we in the United States were really fortunate. Um, our economy was still strong, even though every business just shut down everywhere. Um, our stock market kept the momentum um, that created some financial excitement. We were able to do a, a very, very large, the largest in history bailout uh, of our industry with the... Um, with the PPP and and other things the feds did. Some countries didn't have that ability to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So the, the challenge is, is you got countries that had no ability to do that and they were shut down. And so there's some you know people around the world, the financial side of things in certain countries are not the same as it is here. Um, and so you know we have, I think in here, at least in, in America, we have that to be looked forward to. Like that really helped us a lot, I think, a lot more than what we think. And, um, you know, hopefully we'll have to pay for that down the road a little bit um, through inflation and other things. But, um, you know, I mean, it's important def- to be grateful for it. It's important yeah. to also to, you're right, to realize it. And I think coming back to earlier, like steward that well, like help yeah. people with the position that you're in. Um, and you're right, like, anyone in America is most likely still in a really good position. Comparable. Comparable. Comparable, Yeah. Compared to the world. And I think that's the nature of just, we don't even know how fortunate we are living in the United States. And, um, it's, we have, we we definitely are privileged, um, in that way. So, Mm. um, but looking in 2021, I, you know, the vaccines coming out and stuff. I think um, hopefully those vaccines will do okay with people and get distributed. And, um, you know, we can start to get back to some normal normalcy here by uh, summer. And then, uh, yeah, the, the, the sad thing that's going to happen and we just know it's from human history and my own, my own history of my own, the way I do is we forget so quickly right. and I don't want to go back and say, you know, and, and focus on the negative by anything. But if you don't remember your past, it's really hard for you to, um, to see your future and, and to grow. And so I just don't want to forget about this time where I've grown and we all have, and everyone has. And um, there is a technique. I mean, um, just, uh, creating things that will be reminders for you going Mm. forward. Mm. Um, I keep a journal solely for that purpose Mm. because a couple mentors of mine had, had, I'm not one that loves journaling, but I've started to do it the last couple of years solely for that purpose of being able to be reminded of what it was like, what good or bad, you know, Mm. what you learned good or bad. Was it like a diary? Like a, a yeah. Just like, and it's a digital, like you just do notes. I actually, yeah. So I do, 
I have two. One well, you have called, like a nice little book with patterns on yeah, it. Yeah, no, 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 with, with flowers and things. You started with your diary. Doodle book. <laughs> Dear diary. Your diary. Today, Brad said something mean to me. <laughs> um, <laughs> Get used no, no. to it. Uh, there's. <laughs> Get over it. Get over it. <laughs> There's something called the five minute journal, which if mm-hmm. you don't journal at all, you should totally do. It's based on the the uh, this the science of the mind and gratitude and some of these things, and it's actually really effective. Mm-hmm. Um, and do that. It literally takes five minutes, um, and that's kind of like a little bit more. Um, it, it's 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 less focused on uh, the narrative, and it's more focused on um, mm-hmm. things like. What today, you know, is focusing on the positive things, the things that you're grateful for, no matter what happened. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, and that, that practice is actually really effective. Um, but I take, I just do a couple sentences every, every morning. I, and I try and do it every morning. The truth is it probably happens a few times a week. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just a couple sent a few sentences and just kind of, uh, you know, notable things that are going on, how I'm dealing with it. Um, you know, a lot of time, you know, again, we, uh, if, if, if I feel like God moved in a certain way and like came through for me, um, you know, I I get an answer to something or Mm. something like that. I'll put that in there because again, my, my, my goal with those is to be able to, you know, if I'm like, man, uh, I've really lost perspective or man, like um, I'm in a bad situation now and I can't imagine it'll change. Like being able to look back at the bunch of ways that that has happened in the past and that Mm. did change because we just forget. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And so, and you, what you just mentioned a second ago was something that um, was told to me, and it's true. Like we just forget. Like no matter what, you know, we're just like a year from now, we'll be like, eh, wasn't that bad? Yeah, you know, when it was. Oh, the bad. great thing is we can come back and listen to this episode. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I uh, I don't journal very often. I should. My wife does a lot, and she tries to uh, convince me to. But I just. Um, I don't know. I need to. I think it's a really good. I do thing. that second one digitally. I just do it on Evernote. You do, yeah. One, one per day, yeah. I did journal though, um, a little more in detail of my Corona experience and daily mm. what I felt like, and I just did it because I'm like, you know, one of these days this might be like the Spanish flu where my grand my grandkids grandkids will like look back and go, I wonder, you know, what that was like, and again, these there's going to be a more embellished stories in the future too you know of, of situations you put things. it on a thumb drive in a safe yeah. somewhere well thumb drive <laughs> <laughs> probably people are like what is this thing a thumb drive how do you even use it it's like a, a zip something a zip called disc. usb ever remember a zip disc mm-hmm, yeah did. yeah so yeah usb and then uh so they I can look back and drives. go oh yeah my grandfather <laughs> had it and this is what it felt like and this is what he situation he went through anyways i just documented it because i thought oh you're now at least i'm going to look back at it and read through it again and see how I feel about it. But, um, yeah, maybe in 2021, I need to journal more. Uh, I, I would say you should do it. I I need, what I really need to do more. I can tell you this is I need to carve out time that I can just be quiet. Mm. And, um, and then I think the journal will come from that as well, where I then listen to God, listen to what he's saying to me. Um, and then at the at that time journal so that I can underst- I can get a clearer out clear of quietness. Path of quietness. Yeah. I don't I'm not quiet enough. And um it's uh it definitely is something that I, I think I miss in my life yeah. a lot more. So yeah, meditation and breathing, mm-hmm. prayer, um, however you get there. I mean, just centering your your mind and your body to to connect to your core Mm. um for me i don't do it enough either either but i have done it a lot more in 2020 it's it is life-changing and i've i've hear you hear people say that you read it you know it but um there's something about quieting the mind um and just listening that is so transformative and and the wild thing about it and um is People have been saying this for thousands of years in every culture and every religion. The one thing they have in common is quiet the mind, be still, meditate, pray, whatever yeah. whatever it is. And it's what connects, I think, all yeah. of us together. There's something magical about it. This past year, I tried a couple of things, too, <clears throat> that I I had I never got in a rhythm of it because uh, it's my own fault. But I literally tried to see how long I could create quietness 
and I did it a couple of days and I, uh, 20 minutes is really tough to just mm-hmm. be very quiet to try to get everything out of your head without thinking about something that you like have to do that day or some type of emergency and it starts to change your feeling and your emotions. So mm-hmm. it's almost like you have to clear your head and then also clear out your emotions so that there's not, th- if you're thinking about something, you're going to get emotional. You're, you're going to start thinking about something that's either good or bad or whatever, right? Something you have to do that day. And it's really difficult. I've, I've read that the more you practice it, you can start getting to like t- 40 minutes. Like people who meditate for 40 minutes, it's really difficult. Have you tried any apps? I know it sounds um, cheesy, but they really, they really do help. Are they the, yeah, um, calm. Or, they lead you through. Yeah. 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 Calm app. Yeah, but I mean, if you don't know how to do it, like, yeah, something like that will lead but, you right through. They, but you're still listening. It's, And I agree with you. Those are great too. I'm just trying to do it without any digital help. Yeah. Like, yeah, right. can I That's do it? Part my, of the problem. Right? Can I do yeah. it myself? Yes. Can I? I should be able to do it myself. Yeah. If I can't do it myself, then so I might work on that this uh, year a little bit more, and then the journalism, I th- journal journaling would come out of that, and then that way, I I, uh, I would yeah. encourage you to start with a smaller goal than twenty minutes. I would yeah. say. I'm going to do this for, for five minutes this morning. Yep. Just five minutes is all I am. And then be um, be kind to yourself and be like, oh, I can't do any more. And no, it's like, oh, good job. You did five yeah. minutes this week. So every I, day. Shouldn't, I shouldn't have to go, man, you suck. You only did it for five <laughs> minutes, man. What's up with you, Brad? I Get mean, your act even together. Even five minutes, man, it makes a difference. Yeah, I mean, I would say, especially in the world of agencies, right? So, you know, I mean, any business leader, business owner, um, it's kind of crazy, but agencies you have, we've talked about this before, like you have this, this, um, it's hard to have boundaries and barriers with clients and emergencies and those kind of things. And sometimes they can pierce into your schedule no matter when they are. And so you really need to make time for it. Like you need to protect that time and have that time. Something that'll help also is I'm actually about to start, uh, going in, I'm going to fast for a couple weeks. Mm. And, um, I've done this for the last two years in January and, uh, it quiets and clarifies things like nothing else. And, um, you know, even if you don't do it, if you do it just for that purpose, like not even spiritual purposes or anything like that, like literally going, like peeling back and going into a fast and, and, uh, it just, it, everything just like, it's like you have, you realize you have like blurry vision yeah. the rest of the time. And all of a sudden, like the, everything starts getting really clear. It's just, it's amazing. If you've never done it, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's transformational, yeah. but it's, uh, but yeah, that's something that you can do too. Um, that helps a lot for that. You know what you realize? I realize, I don't know if you guys do in, in meditation and fasting and prayer, whatever, whatever method you get there is what you were saying, Brad, is you realize how how out of control you can be of yourself. Meaning I'm the same way. Like I'll be sitting there trying to like, all right, let's, let's turn off all the technology. Let's sit here for a few minutes. Let's breathe or pray, whatever. And, and then all of a sudden a thought comes in your mind, like, Oh, I got to go do that today. Or, Oh, look at that guy running down the street or, you know, uh, or or there's just an interruption. You don't realize how much interruptions there are. Yeah. Or I forgot to respond to that email. Let me go do it real quick. Um, I think that's the value, right? It's like, I got to get back in control and centered of my own life. And because if I can't do that for myself, um, I think I'm walking around unconsciously asleep, being controlled by my own monkey mind Mm. in my business with my family and my relationships. So you got to start with yourself. just really like releasing that to some degree. So right, yeah. And if you think of yourself, I I literally, when you start doing it, you really think of yourself as a, as a prisoner Mm -hmm. to some degree of our society of time and stuff and demands and noises. I mean, everything is electronic. There's, if you just shut your eyes and you listen, there'll be like 20 beeps in your house of just electronic things going off, beep, beep, or whatever, someone's phone or someone, it's just, and for people who can't get those stuff you know they can't isolate themselves and, and not hear those it's very interruptive and it's amazing Especially if, you're, if you're not aware of this it's amazing how that we're interrupting. yeah right you need to become aware of it if you're not aware of that already like you're just a slave to it right yeah now. like you got to become aware of it and once you see that you're like wow every yeah right everything is trying to interrupt me mm-hmm. everything is trying to addict me to it as well yeah or a lot of things are 
you know, I never, I don't realize like, oh man, my, I just act, you know, without even thinking about it, pull up my phone when I have two seconds just to scroll Instagram or something like that. Like when you do those things, um, you don't, you, you're addicted to that thing. It's really exactly. bad. You kind of pull that away and you actually start to get clarity on stuff. I know. And you don't yeah. think, you think 120 uh, pickups on your phone is too much for Ooh. the day? Right. Me? <laughs> no, I mean, that's I'm kind one of, of those, probably, yeah. you know, on average, probably I'm at least sure. that much. I'm sure. You know, I think, um, yeah. If, I, if, I, if you ever watch some, two people sitting at a, uh, like out to dinner um, and one person is like on a phone, like at, at, like a phone call, the other person will immediately, as soon as they jump on that phone call, pick up their phone just yeah. to waste time because they feel like. Yeah, you know, we exactly. It's like somebody, you, you go to, a, <laughs> I've seen this and I've done it myself. Yeah. Your coffee with someone or dinner and, and their phone rings and you're like, oh, go ahead if you need to get that. Yeah. There's like, oh, okay, just real quick. As soon as they do it, you immediately grab yours because it gives you permission yes. mm -hmm. to like zone Even out. Even if it's it. zoning out on social, it's still, it does, it's a, it's addictive. And, you uh, know, I have a friend and we should have her on, on the podcast. Um, her name is Jenny Black. She's a, um, she's a local therapist and counselor and she has um, kind of owned and coined this phrase um, and she's written a little bit about it. It's called, uh, it's, and she calls it media trauma. And she, in her practice, her therapy and her, she's a master, she has a master's in psychology is um, she's dealt in her practice with people who have different types of trauma, right? Like childhood trauma and, you know, whatever, PTSD on many different levels from traumatic events. Um, but what she's found in the last several years and just studying and reading and talking to specifically young teenagers and preteens, but then also adults is that your brain can be traumatized um, in many different ways because your brain doesn't know the difference, right? Mm -hmm. Like if, and what there was a study and she, she said, well, here's an example, you know, the Boston, um, the Boston marathon bomb that went mm -hmm. off a few years ago. Um, a lot of us witnessed that on feeds and things like that. And they did a study and they said that, people who watched it real time or on their phones after were more traumatized by that than the people that were actually there. Because when you're present in a traumatic event, your body can respond and react, right? So if, if you're on that road and a bomb goes off, you can either run really fast away, you go hide under something, you go help people that, are, that have been hurt by it. But when you're sitting there watching it, your brain is saying, "All right, my body needs to do something. It mm. needs to react, and all you need to, and all you can do is swipe and go to the next thing, and the next thing, and the right. next thing." And 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 she started, you know, explaining it to me. She's like, "Imagine like somebody who's bullying you if you're a kid through text, you know, mm. and you're in a group text, and five people are saying, you know, you're ugly or whatever." that's trauma that's going on in your brain and you don't even realize it. And it's like micro micro going mm -hmm. on. So anyway, I you just can't even do anything about yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it's, it's an interesting phenomenon. I'd love to have her on and talk about it, but um, I don't know how we got off on this topic, but I think in, in 2021 um, probably be good for me and for all of us to, to, to de-plug and detach to some degree. Less yes. social media for sure. Um, I think that uh, our society could use a lot less of it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it might happen uh, forcibly. There. So, yeah. I mean, there, I wouldn't be surprised in the next five years if there's strong movements that people, it's like a fast, right? I mean, just, and people do this, but m more for the common public where you just kind of get to the point where you're like, this isn't valuable, uh, it's valuable anymore to me. And uh, it, you kind of become numb to it to the point where it's, it doesn't become valuable, where social media doesn't become value, as valuable anymore. Um, I think there might be more of a trend to that. Um, Those of us who sell digital services. Yeah, I, mean, I, yeah. Sell, I sell it. <laughs> well, and then what does that know. mean to us? I mean, yeah. what if there was a phase, what if there was a thing, a worldwide thing that people just, and, there, and it happens in micro, um, things right now where people would just petition like I'm doing a fast for some social media. But what if that did got to the point where not as many eyeballs were on Facebook or Instagram, we've, not as many eyeballs were on TikTok. We've actually, uh, we've had some discussion about this off, you know, off of the podcast. And so maybe we need to discuss this on the podcast in an episode, yeah. because I do think, I think digital marketing is changing and we'll have probably, I think some mass disruption inside of it. Um, or, you know, and, uh, maybe we could talk about what happens if that did happen. Yeah. You know, what you is know, it, where does it go? I've always said that 
that platforms don't matter. They will come and they go. They shouldn't matter. Mm. Yeah. But I think they do. They do, but if you're doing <clears throat> marketing right, Right, I'm saying I'm if you're saying, doing digital marketing right, right, the platform shouldn't matter. It's there's some core principles that you should be following, and yeah, we should talk about that. No, I wonder if I, I totally agree with that. I think um, I think as an industry, or maybe uh, just as as a business community, it's become platform marketing, right. not marketing That's in a lot right. of places. So it's interesting to see. How, you know, I think if we, where well, you're right, like how do we move back there? Because I think that. We're probably ripe for some disruption. Not we, I say, as like just the business community. I think because of that. Mm. But um, hey, we have a few minutes left. Are we going to talk about the words for twenty twenty one or the themes? We're going to do I that think another we should, episode. I'm give you guys a week because it'll be the new year. Okay. In yeah. The next episode. Well, again, I kind of give away mine. I think a new. I need to think about mine a little. But bit. I need to think mine. Think through it a little, a little further. Okay. okay. Um, any predictions for twenty twenty one on anything? Any in business life? Any predictions? I think, I think we're going to feel the fallout of 2020 in some ways. Mm. I think everyone's saying 2021 is going to be great, but I don't think, and maybe we felt the worst, but I don't think we've felt the worst of COVID yet as yeah. far as just the effects and the trickle, the down, aftermath, right? the aftermath, you yeah. know, it's like, it's kind of like this, the, is it tsunami effect or something? It's like, you know, when the wave comes in, mm. that's really bad. <clears throat> but when that goes tide out. goes out, that's when you get devastation. Yeah. So mm, that's interesting. Just a, yeah, I tend to agree. I think that um, I don't think it's going to just magically snap back. I have hope, yes. and I think that there's a lot of good that will. I, I don't. I don't. This is not a sad statement. I think that, but I do think that we're still seeing the residuals. I think that. Um, I, th I think that in some ways it, it could be harder because it might be gnawing and longer. Mm -hmm. um, but at be the same time, fatigue. I think that creates opportunity. Oh, absolutely. Like, uh, you know, I, I, yeah, I mean, I kind of, I kind of get excited about some, some disruption mm -hmm. because it's like, okay, that's hard, but it also creates opportunity. Um, and I think that, I think that that's exciting in some ways. Uh, by no means am I excited about all the stuff that's going on, but I do think that that's, that's part of it. Yeah, mm. for sure. Yeah. Uh, I think we should have a whole episode on predictions for the future. I think we're going to see, and we talked about this last episode of, I think Facebook is going to get disrupted. I think social media is going to get disrupted. I think there'll be some legal things that come down right or wrong. Um, agree, disagree, doesn't matter. It's just, it can't continue um, with what we've seen in the past four years. It's just, it's nuts. It's literally nuts. Mm -hmm. And that cannot sustain long-term. There's yeah. no way it's not sustainable. Yeah. Mm. 2021, I would say, uh, um, you guys mentioned some good things in 21, but I would predict 21 as the year of Bitcoin. There you mm -hmm. go. So this is okay. my prediction. We'll look back in a year from now and see uh, how I did. But the year of Bitcoin. A lot of people just, listening are like, the uh, year of Bitcoin has been the last seven no, years. No, this is, no, I know that was just play. This is the, the this year. Is the you, real, I think this is the year of Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what. Brad's been on mining. A, on yeah. a different, yeah, I've been up all night mining. <laughs> oh, man. The mining <laughs> Bitcoin. Mining Bitcoin. <laughs> the, uh, no, I do believe that that's uh, next year. We'll talk about that under maybe right, a different yeah. podcast or something. Anyways, um, yeah, so we need to talk about the future of agency in 2021. We need to talk about, you know, their pos the position of what we see, our businesses and that. We talk about, I mean, marketing is key to that. The marketing platforms are changing. I've said for the last little while, almost jokingly before all this happened, like what happened if there was no Facebook? Now there might be mm -hmm. some situation where that gets changed dramatically. Who knows what happens? How do you market that way? Like we didn't talk about that. We need to talk about... Um, the in maybe the investment structures or some of that mm. financial structure. Yeah, how do you? Um, yeah, I think one of the good podcasts would be how do you as a business owner? And it's by no means advice, but you know what yeah. have we done? How what are we, some things to do? To, things even yeah. personally to uh, to invest yeah. in yourself as well as your business uh, in other ways so that you yeah. um, you know I mean if you do retire. In, in in this business and you do or sell your business or even retire in your business you know how do you pre present yourself so that you can uh, you know retire yeah. and have freedom as early as possible in life but our first episode of the year needs to be um the themes for the year that, that we're talking about and why yeah. um and so mm. yeah 
That's good, guys. Well, you guys doing anything the rest of the year that's uh, fun, exciting, celebrating the new year? What do you mean tomorrow? Yeah, New Year's. <laughs> well, I'm really curious what New Year's Eve is going to be like. Yeah, me too. I think it's going to be a celebration. Are you guys staying around? You guys traveling? Yeah, yeah. I'm planning on on being here. Yeah, Same me too. Yeah. yeah. Be. How about you? Yeah, we're just gonna hang out and party. Party right, at your house? Way. Yeah. New Year's, New Year's uh, Eve at your house? I don't know what we're doing for New Year's Eve. Actually, we're just gonna be around as a family, but we might be partying at my house. Is we the ball may... gonna drop? At my house? No, I mean just in general. I yeah, think it should right? Yeah. They've been canceling a lot of stuff. Over Not there. the ball. Oh, the New York City ball drop. Yeah, yeah. The oh, New York yeah City obviously, ball. Times Square. I think won't some be. version of it will. I um, hope yeah. they drop the thing, but it's. I don't know. It's actually. Have you, if you ever see it in person, it's like a tiny thing. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh. The camera like, makes it look gigantic. You just did oh. your fingers like you this, know like what? The size of a dime. Is it that small? It looks. <laughs> Ryan Seacrest is also a small guy. He looks a lot bigger on TV. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I always imagined it was giant. You're right. And I lived in New York City my entire life, but I never went to go see it. And then, like you know, about maybe ten years ago, I went to go see it, and I'm like, seriously, mm. it is just like what's it like the size of a basketball? Or no, what? no, no. It, it feels like it's maybe again. I'm gonna. I'm guessing it's gonna be totally wrong, but it looks like it's like ten or fifteen feet wide. Okay. I mean, on TV, it looks I don't know thirty, yeah. forty, fifty, Zoom like a giant in. ball. You know. Well. Yeah. Anyway. All right. All right, guys. Well, we will talk to you next year. Until yeah. next, <laughs> awesome. next Until year. Until 2021. Yes. Bye. Bye. Bye.